You know, as a turkey hunter, one of the most frustrating things we can experience is that right there. We can throw some of our best yelps and cuts out into a block of woods and not get that response we're looking for. Uh, because when we, when we put that yelp out there, we cut these uh, calls that we work on all winter, all year long, um, you know, we want that response. We want to hear that, that gob or hammer back and let us know that he's in there and he's uh, looking for love, so to speak. But all too often, that's what happens. We get these birds that just will not gobble. And uh, you get these times of year, we're just like now, a lot of what we're facing here in the latter part of the Virginia season, um, where they're just not gobbling that well. And, um, you know, today we're gonna talk about a little bit about that and talk about some of the, um, some of the reasons around that and some of the strategies to kind of look at in order to still get out there and get after those birds and find some success. And so before we get going with it, I do want to encourage you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can stay in touch with me on all the content that I'm going to be putting out there. I got a lot of videos I've been putting out trying to uh, just, you know, kind of share some of the things that I've learned over the years and uh, put it out there to make us all better turkey hunters. And so, so again, you know, what to do with gobblers that uh, won't gobble. Um, in my opinion, the one of the hardest things to do is, hurt, uh, is to hunt a turkey that will not gobble. Um, you know, we when you go into a block of property, you know, a, a turkey could have a three, four, five mile range and um, that he, he could be at on. And um, so you might feel uh, certain that he's in a block of woods or he's on this property. And if he's not giving up his location though, it makes it um, almost impossible to come up with a good strategy aside from just sitting and, uh, you know, sweating him out. And, um, and, it, and that can be a little bit of a, of a boring venture, if you know what I'm saying. So, um, so all that said though, first let's talk about like what happens with gobblers and why they oftentimes, why you're maybe not hearing some gobbles. Um, just like right now here in Virginia, uh, bluebird morning as you can probably see behind me, a uh, beautiful day this morning. Went into a place uh, with a friend of mine where um, two days before he had seen two toms strutting in a field all by, by themselves. And um, we got in there this morning expecting to hear the woods light up. Just a perfect morning, nice and cool, kind of still, uh, nice dew on the ground. And it was just dead quiet. Didn't hear a peep. Uh, had a hen fly down out into the field, but um, just thought within any moment that a gobbler was going to be pitching down to accompany her. But after about an hour, she made her way on across the field and it was just, it was just a, a ghost town, so to speak. And so, but um, a few things to be mindful about as far as like, you know, birds that aren't gobbling. Well, one that can largely affect it in any area is to be mindful of how many people are hunting it and what happens there. Because if um, people are going in there on a regular basis, we're knowing where gobblers are roosted and they're setting up on them and calling. Well, it doesn't take um, a turkey long to figure figure out that you know um, you know there's there's something changed in the in the uh, ether, so to speak, and they'll they'll kind of change their habits on that too. Um, you know, you can call it hunting pressure or ca um, call shy, so to speak. You know, uh, birds can still be called to that have been called at, but. Um, you know, that the hunting pressure certainly affects it, and anybody who hunts public land would agree with that. You know, you get birds that get hammered big time, then um, you're, they're just gonna get harder and harder and harder to hunt throughout the season. Uh, I, I personally have a spot that I hunt that uh, it's a, a hunt club with, uh, we have give or take about 1,500 acres of property, and um, there's, um, you know, about, about 40, plus or minus members in that club. And of that, you could probably take about, um, you know, about a, a, a third of them, you know, will turkey hunt it. And uh, that, that can, you know, kind of wax and wane as far as the numbers. But um, on any given day, there's there could be, you know, uh, two to three people daily throughout the season that are hunting that, that property. And if you d divide that up by acreage and boots on the ground, then, um, that, that's a, a lot of uh, activity that those birds are experiencing and it will push them off as uh, you know, the, these people going in and out and these people constantly uh, pushing them off of their little food spots or their uh, strut zones and stuff. 
then they'll start changing those habits up. So just be mindful of that. If, it, if you're hunting in places that got a lot of birds or a lot of people hunting, then the birds will change that activity up as the season progresses. And uh, most of you that hunt pressured places, you probably all already know that. That's pretty basic information, but if you don't, there it is. And so uh, aside from that, though, moving on, you know, there's a lot of things that also will kind of uh, stifle the, the gobbling activity. And um, barometric, pressure, pr barometric pressure has long held a uh, theory as, um, you know, creating highs and lows in gobbling activity. And, um, you know, that, while I do believe that that is, uh, ha has a, a big effect on it, I also think that there's just uh, times a year where things start to kind of, Kind of taper off too you know you get in the earlier part of season where there's a lot of receptive hens and the the gobblers are accustomed to that and you know they're gonna they're gonna be gobbling hard and trying to you know round up all those hens that they can so to speak and uh they're they're a lot more aggressive they're they're out there they're fighting and they're you know trying to still establish their pecking order as far as like the hens and the gobblers and so you're going to get a lot more vocaliz vocalizations from birds Whereas like now as this season continues to progress, then the birds are now kind of, they, they're, they've got their little, um, their little groups that they're sticking to, so to speak. And these might get narrowed down to even just a, a gobbler with a hen or two. Sometimes that they might still have three or four hens, but uh, oftentimes when you get into the latter part of season, like now, what, what I often will see is like uh, long gobblers and, um, or you might see a gobbler with what I like to call a girlfriend and that's one that uh, you know she's still sticking with him and uh, she may not even make it to the nest she's just kind of um, his his daily company so to speak and so but all that said that the goblin just tapers off and uh, it can be super frustrating um, and you know you go out there and you again bluebird day um, pitch a perfect piece of property and you would just expect the woods to be just lit up. Well, you know, what do you do on those kind of days? How, how do you um, still manage to go ahead and have a successful hunt or, um, you know, at least get some bird activity going? Well, a f few things that you wanna, uh, you, know, you know, focus on the obvious right there. We know birds are in there. And so in the early part of the season, you know, you've done some scout and you've been out in the woods and probably hunted that property before. So get back into those areas and put boots on the ground looking for areas where you've seen previous turkey sign and start looking for that sign. Look for scratchings on the ground. You can look for where they've been raking up leaves and such. And uh, you need to be able to determine is that fresh scratchings? Is that where it was a turkey in here, you know, two, three weeks ago? Has it been rained on quite a bit? Or was this this morning, you know, use your own boot to kind of rake the ground back and see, you know, compare the contrast of the, of the ground and, uh, you know, the, 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 um, you know, the, 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 the dirt and the, the leaves and whatnot as to what you're looking at there where that scratching is. Uh, sometimes it's pretty obvious. You don't even have to tell if it's an old scratching, then you're going to know pretty quickly that it's an old scratching. Um, but be looking for fresh scratchings because that right there is uh i mean that's like finding you know um you know finding a pot of gold when you're turkey hunting especially on these days where you got good weather and it's cool you can find some uh usually those areas are nice kind of shady spots it's a good area to, to find a nice comfortable tree and hunker down and just do some waiting and we're going to talk about some calling strategies too to kind of work on with that but um First, keeping on with looking for sign. If, you, um, if you're if kind of new to turkey hunting and you don't know the kind of sign that you want to be looking for, well, you know, scratching being one of them, we've covered that. But now let's talk about um, areas that turkeys really like to hang out on, uh, you know, these nice sunny days like this is, you know, along, along the edge of a field. You know, a lot of times right here in Virginia, we, we have these, uh, these wheat crops that are growing and this time of year, they'll get on up there, they'll be pretty you know they can be up to your waist uh, in some fields by now and but right along the fringe where the uh, you know the roads going in the tractor roads and whatnot a lot of times that grass will be a little bit shorter and sometimes it'll be sandy and um, you know birds they like these little sandy areas a, 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 you know uh, farms with a lot of roads through it um, you know those little you know dirt roads and gravel and you know just some the little pebble gravel and stuff like that 
Well, turkeys depend on that sand and gravel for their digestive system uh, just as much as the grain that they're out there pecking and the, the acorns that they're scratching around on. Uh, they're out there in that sand and also with those little dirty sandy areas you're going to be looking for dust bowls. So you're looking for turkey tracks in that dirty or those uh, you know road type areas but look for dust bowls. Oftentimes that'll look like just where maybe um, a kid's been playing in the dirt and it's almost like a little little concave looking bowl in the in the ground and it's kind of just disturbed ground and what those uh, birds will do is they'll they'll get in there and they'll dust themselves for the purpose of uh you know like bug control is what my understanding for that is and uh but you'll you'll see hens getting in those dust bowls if you sit there with some um you know if you're watching hens in a field long enough you'll often see them like lay down and start dusting themselves and uh, but be looking for those dust bowls and you can oftentimes uh, as well tell how fresh those areas are. And so uh, dust bowls is a great area to hang out because why? Because, you know, if a hen's dusting in that dust bowl or that area quite a bit, well, that means hen's hanging out there and a gobbler very likely knows that. And so uh, other things you want to look for is the obvious, you know, again, tracks, but then like poop on the ground. If you see turkey droppings, you know, learn to recognize the shape of, a, you know, of hen droppings versus, uh, you know, the gobbler droppings. And, um, but, um, you know, and again, you need to kind of be able to tell how fresh that is. But, um, but all in all, looking for sign, you know, looking for where turkeys hang out, you know, feeding areas, uh, strut zones, and um, just, um, you know, dust bowl areas. And, you know, of course, that there's areas where gobblers just like to hang out. There's kind of little shady spots along fields' edges and stuff, and they'll just kind of, especially in the heat of the day, you know, they might hang tight with a little shady spot and just, you know, lay down on the ground and hang out there for a large part of the day and won't say a peep. You can get in their bubble all you want to and throw some of the, uh, the best cuts and yelps in the world out there that could take you to uh, all the way to Nashville and it's gonna be hard to pull a response from that, that gobbler. But, so now let's talk about that though and still calling to turkeys and uh, still hunting those turkeys on those days. And not my favorite style to hunt them, uh, to just sit and wait on them, but sometimes, you know, if you're uh, trying to, you know, punch that tag on days that gobblers aren't gobbling, then, you know, waiting them out is gonna be a, about the only choice that you get. But but getting into some of the calling strategy, let's say that I found a spot where there's a lot of turkey sign. Maybe there's uh, a lot of scratchings on the ground and I just know this place is just scratched up with it uh, or tore up with, you know, scratchings on the ground. And well, I'm gonna find me a big old tree where I can hunker down and I'm probably gonna take my cutters and build me a little brush blind. And then that way I got uh, some cover around me unless, you know, there's, unless I can find something to, you know, kind of hunker down in within that area that I can still see well, because the idea here is, is that like, again, you know, if you can see that gobbler coming to you before um, he sees you, then, um, you know, of course, if he sees you, your, your chances are gonna be blown, but you wanna be able to pick him out coming through the woods. And a lot of times in those shady woods, it can be tough because you get out there and that breeze is blowing and you'd like to doze off. You know, you've been up since three, four o'clock in the morning and you can get quite comfortable sitting on in that shade sometimes but but what i like to do though is kind of just hunker down and uh i'll oftentimes build me a little brush blind and um early part of the season you know i'm oftentimes just depending on just a mouth call but as i move into these parts of the season where i'm trying to pull a response from a gobbler or maybe like kind of pique his curiosity well that's where i'm kind of like really starting to dig into my bag of tricks and um, that's where, when, when I'm gonna start kind of leaning on other calls that I've carried in the woods with me. And so um, some of the bare essentials of that, just to go through it real quick, you know, of course you, you know, it's always smart to have a box call for, for striking and locating. And, you know, you can, you can pull all kinds of different, uh, you know, your yelps and your cuts with, with the box call. Um, but, Largely what I like to do is, you know, when I get up in those, I'm not calling aggressive. You know, the idea here is get in those woods and start really, really soft. And just, you know, uh, you know, if I were to go in, find that area, 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to not say nothing for probably like 30 minutes. I'm going to sit and listen. I'm going to be listening for any kind of distant gobbles. Uh, maybe just walking in in uh, in and about, you know, down through the woods. I'm going to be listening for, you know, of course, a spitting or drumming of a of a turkey, um, yelping of hens. If I if if a hen starts yelping somewhere or even just a single yelp, then I'm going to try to talk to her. I'm going to call that hen in at that point, and uh, just any, you know, you're think of it as desperation at this point. You're wanting any turkey within that uh, vicinity to kind of come over and have a little conversation with you and so um but doing that you know starting out really really soft again the mouth call maybe you've not drawn a response with that but keep it soft you know just little soft yelps don't draw them out too much you know five six yelps and just wait maybe do some clucks a little bit of purring with the mouth call and raking them leaves just make it sound like you're a turkey over there uh, scratching the ground and then then drop off don't you know don't start calling again for you know a few minutes give it you know 10 minutes or so and um, maybe you could deploy the same mouth call or you know work into something else but again oftentimes I'll jump into finding another call in my best or something to, to just try and trying to strike that response and like this right here is a uh, ceramic over glass pot call that I make um, in a walnut pot and um, I'll just take this one and I'll I'll put a few purrs out there, a few little soft yelps, some clucking. All in all, though, I'm just wanting to kind of keep it, keep the, uh, keep it down. Keep, you know, you don't want to be trying to crank it up and get them too fi or get real fired up because you know the woods are quiet. So just you know, do what you're hearing. You're not hearing a lot of turkeys, so you don't want to be that one weirdo turkey out there that's just like hadn't shut up for the last 45 minutes to an hour because trust me, a gobbler's gonna say, nah, something's not right about that. And so that was a ceramic though. And so I might wait, you know, 15, 20 minutes and I might break out a different slate surface. Like right here, I have a cherry pot with, uh, it's a cherry or a slate over glass and a cherry pot. And uh, same striker here, but if I wanted to that one could use a little roughing. I probably should have um, but the good thing about a any slate surface too or any uh, pot call like this is like let's say you know you could carry two if you if you carry two pot calls like i do and then say um i carry probably about we'll say um six to eight different strikers well that's 24 to 32 different calls essentially that you've got uh because you're you're able to vary that sound just a little bit and so Every time you change your striker out, you're gonna be able to change out the pitch of that call. But the big idea there, when you're doing, um, when you're hunting turkeys that just aren't gobbling real hard, is to just keep that volume and that, uh, that aggressiveness really, really low because they're not aggressive, so don't be getting aggressive yourself and trying to, you know, um, you're not you're not going to be able to just turn them on like in an instance like that. So the idea would be that he's feeding along and um, he hears some soft calling, and he's just going to come over there and kind of take a peek, and uh, you're you're going to be very receptive to him doing that and hopefully be ready. So, um, but the idea is to. Make sure and have a little bit of an arsenal of calls. Um, you know, you'll see some guys carry out, um, some guys carry out, you know, quite a, quite a slew of calls. And um, 
I don't like carrying a whole, whole bunch just because like I like to be somewhat minimal, but uh, it's amazing what sometimes just switching, switching a call up and, you know, change, varying the tone, varying the, the, the pitch or the type call, you know, going from like a crystal to a slate or a slate to a crystal or whatnot, or, you know, dropping off from using the mouth call, you know, using a tube call, you know, something like that can trigger that response when nothing else will. So, uh, big idea though, keep it soft and don't be trying to get too aggressive on these days like this and look for that turkey sign because that right there is like, it's, uh, that's where the turkeys are at. If you've got fresh sign in these areas, then that's where they're going to be. And just get in there and wait on them because they're going to be, they're going to be coming through there and you'll, you will find success doing that. So, uh, be sure and drop me a comment below. Let me know what you think about this video. And if, uh, there's anything that you're looking for, uh, tip wise that might can help you out with like hunting gobblers and you guys stay with them because it's uh, still a lot of good hunting left and I've had uh, several years in the past where um, we have these little lulls like we're having now and then uh, things just fire right back up in that last week and it's uh, you would think it's the very first week of season the way the gobblers are responding and the good news is a lot of times you get on a bird this time of year uh, what I found is some of my best birds in my life have been these late season birds. Uh, oftentimes when you kill these birds um, this part of the year, they are some hammers. So get out there and put the time in, uh, do your homework, get your scouting in there, find where those gobblers are hanging out, um, move around quietly, be listening and get focused and um, be working on the calls and call that gobbler in and shoot straight um yeah, we got about another week here in virginia and so uh several more you know about another month throughout the the country i guess you could say give or take um and start tapering off here as the month of may rolls on but um uh, i've got i'll be going up to maryland um uh, next week i'll be up there uh, this time next week hunting and then uh come back for a short stint here in virginia and uh, enough time to maybe uh, put, hopefully put some turkey breast in the freezer and it won't be long after that, I'll be headed to New Jersey for uh, my final hunt of the year and I'll be hunting up there. I'm taking my wife with me. We're ho both hoping to uh, tag a, a one to two um, New Jersey birds. So, um, so you guys stick with me. Hopefully I have some great content to share with y'all in the upcoming weeks of some uh, postseason stuff and uh, drop me a comment below and let me know how your season's going. Let me know if there's any info that I can help you out with. I uh, love helping you guys with anything uh, turkey hunting related and uh, you guys be sa safe out there and um, let me know how your season's going and be working on those calls because they are still gobbling.